Ms. Dandridge, you have asked for a few minutes alone with me before the defendant joins us. Yes, ma'am. You say you are here to determine if you finally found your biological father. Yes, ma'am. You claim you were recently given the name of someone you believe is that man, though you've never laid eyes on him before. Yes, ma'am. He's waiting outside the courtroom, and you will meet him for the first time in just a few moments. Uh, you have petitioned the court to administer a DNA test to determine if he is, in fact, your long-lost father. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Dandridge, I know this is emotional for you. So take me back. You've never known no, who your biological father was growing up? No, ma'am, I didn't. I was raised to believe that my sister's dad was my dad. I was like around 9 or 12. I, I was old enough to know how to read. And I found adoption papers stating that my dad wasn't my dad, that I, I believed was my dad. I you didn't... found adoption papers indicating that the man you thought was your father had, in fact, adopted you. Yes, ma'am. Because I, I tried as a youth to ask my mom, and she was never forthcoming. She was always, I don't know who your dad is, or he didn't want you, you know? She was just mean to me. So let's fast forward a bit. Take me to the point where you started the search for your father. At some point, you got a name. How did you get that name? Roughly three months ago, I posted on Facebook, um, this status may hurt some people's feelings, but I really want to know who my dad is. And my mom, she got on there and she uh, told me that I was a liar and that I never asked who my dad was and just threw his name at me. And then after she gave me that name, she told me to never contact her again. Jerome, would you please <laughs> escort Mr. Sigmund into Certainly. the courtroom? Mr. Sigmund, come on in. Mr. Sigmund, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Oh, that's beautiful. I cannot believe you're standing in front of my face. Mr. Sigmund, can you describe for the court your initial reaction? I was in shock because I was told when I was younger I was sterile, that I couldn't have kids. But I was at the right place at the right time with her mother down in Florida. So, you did know her mother? Yes, ma'am. And you did have a relationship with her mother? Back in 1987, I was a drifter. I was probably around 28 years old. I drifted down into Florida, down the boardwalk. I met this lady, she tapped me on the shoulder, which was her mother. We spent a lot together, the beach life. We traveled. We run the beaches, we jumped fences. We had sex on the beach, sex in the pools, and... <laughs> well, I don't know if her daughter needed to hear all that, but... <laughs> it sounds like you all had a wonderful time together. How did this relationship end? We had actually talked about marriage one time. Then things got blowed up. She, she was gone one weekend. I got trouble with the law. Down there, I made some bad choices. I got kicked out of the state of Florida for a year. And knowing that I was sterile, I knew it wasn't any reason to go back. You know, I done started another relationship. So did you ever know that her mother was pregnant? No, I did not have a clue until she called me and told me that she was my long lost child. I know this will be very emotional for you both either way. If you'd like to sit down, Ms. Dandard. All right. DNA Diagnostics has prepared these results, and they are as follows. In the case of Dandridge versus Sigmund, when it comes to Ms. Cassandra Dandridge, Mr. Sigmund, you are not oh, her father. That's not true. I can't breathe. I can't Sit breathe. her down, 
Mr. Sigmund, just put her down. My father's the way I've come through too much. He was supposed to be my dad. I'm never going to know. Oh, goodness gracious. Honey, oh my goodness. Take your jacket off. Take your jacket off. Just take deep breaths. Jerome, can you give her some water, please? I My know heart you is so broke. <laughs> Miss Dandridge, you can look at it as thinking it was the end or. You can look at it as the beginning. Because as long as you're still alive, as long as your mother's still alive, there's that opportunity for you to reach out to her, to ask her, Mom, is there anyone else? And this may just be the thing that opens the door up just a hair for you and your mother to begin to work on your relationship. I think you're strong enough to try it. Matter of fact, I know you are. Yeah, I've been through this. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. With that said, court is adjourned, everyone. Miss St. James, you claim for the first 33 years of your life, you were a daddy's girl from early childhood all the way through your dad walking you down the aisle. But just six months ago, after an argument, your father dropped a bomb on you and said, you are not my daughter. You and your brother have opened a case to prove paternity today. Is that correct? Yes, yes, your honor. Mr. Esau, you state you have always believed Miss St. James was not your biological daughter, but could never find the right time to tell her the truth. You state this 33-year-old secret has been haunting you for way too long and you are ready for the truth to set you free. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Miss St. James. Yes, Your Honor. Tell the court what happened six months ago. I wrote my dad a letter um, right before Christmas, a couple of weeks before Christmas, just telling him how I felt about him not being in his grandchildren's lives and how he's not being the father that we need since we lost our mother at a young age. And that was his response, is the reason why I haven't been in your life is because uh, the reason why... He didn't answer that any is, of my that questions. Is, that is not true. He didn't answer my questions. He basically responded three days later with the reason why you went through the things you did as a child is because you're not my daughter. That was his response. That is not what I... That is... So I that was lie. the first time you had ever heard of he a paternity question anything. Ever. You just wrote your dad a letter. And he this is the father you've known your whole life. My whole, my whole life. <laughs> You're great. What happened, Mr. Esau? How did this all Six start? Six months ago. It's something that I've always wanted to talk to her about and tell her, you know, and it just never was, uh, was the right time. Is it your testimony that for 33 years you have known that Miss St. James was not your biological daughter? Correct. Yes, Your Honor. What did her mother tell you? And she just basically told me she was pregnant. This was no. not something you knew for certain? Mm. No, not 100%. I mean, it wasn't 100%, and but you know, with the doctors... that's why he shouldn't have never said have anything. Pro- that's why he shouldn't have did this to me. Time, I've been through lines, so much stress and anxiety time lines because have of what up. this has happened. Based on the you doctor... You don't do that. I, I went to his house every summer, Christmas. You couldn't have me swabbed. You couldn't do anything. All these years, I'm 33 years old. When her mom found out she was pregnant, were you told? She told me yes. And so, take me back to that time. Uh, basically, she told me she was pregnant, and I'm like, okay. Uh, you know, you're 18, you're like, okay. I'm like, wow. You know, you don't really you know how to really a- react, but I was like, okay, wow, she's pregnant. And it wasn't until the doctor told her how far along she was, and doing the math, it was, you know, before me. And, you know, so she, it wasn't like she was cheating on me, because we had just started. It was, she was already pregnant prior to us meeting. That was what you believed at the outset. As soon as she told you she was pregnant, 
you did the math in your mind and said she must have been pregnant before she no, met me. Not yep. right away. I mean, that's nothing you think about right away because she's telling you she's pregnant. There's other emotions going on. But at some point, Mr. E saw you continue a relationship with her mother because you all end up having her brother, KJ. Right, later on, yes. They got married after I was born. He so... Went, he... So he named how, me. <clears throat> how huge could the doubt have been if you ended up continuing the relationship, getting married, having another child? Mm -hmm. What's happening here? Uh, you know, one of the things also talking to my mom, you know, and she explained the time frames. Okay, sat down, she sat down and talked to me and was like, okay, when did this happen? When did that happen? When did this happen? And he and, probably told her whatever she needed to hear. Uh, and what the doctor said. So, Miss St. James, paternity. what are your hopes for today? Your, your father, he's walked you down the aisle. He's, you said you're a daddy's girl. This has been... He better not be my daddy. The last six months have been hell. Hell on earth for me since December 8th or whatever day it was that you decided to say you're not my daddy no more. If you don't want to be my daddy, you don't have to be. Jenna, tell the truth about how I told you. You make it sound like I just came out and said, I'm, I'm not your daddy. You, you and I said, I'm not your father, just like that. That's okay. just on that's the phone. I just picked up the phone you and said, You're not my phone. father. You said, I have something to tell you. I'm not your daddy. And I said, You're lying. We look just alike. We both have booty chins. You said, I'm, I'm, I'm not the only person with a booty chin. The other guys got booty chins, too. I went looking for both of the men. That is not how I, I told you. I found one of them. And he said that my mom and dad uh, told him that he didn't need to worry about it because I was his child. So... So you actually went to find one of the other potential fathers... I, I found one of them. And that man told you... No, his son told me, because I didn't talk to him. I talked to his son. Okay, so you talked to the son, and the son of this man said that my father was told years ago that he didn't have anything to worry about. Mr. Esau was your yep, biological that's father. That's what that man Which told then reaffirmed son. what you had been told. Yep. So the truth is, nobody really knows. There has been a paternity secret brewing for over three decades. When it comes to 33-year-old Jasmine St. James, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Esau. Yes, Your Honor. You... are not the oh. father. Can I give her a hug? That's if better. She... I can accept it. And I'm sorry I waited so long. I mean, that was... It's my... I've always taken responsibility for as that talking to her that, of not telling her. That was her right to know. And I should have told her, she should have been told a long time ago, not when she's 33 years old. But that's, you'll never understand how hard that is. It, it truly is why we do this. Because we want people to have the truth. Can you tell the court in this moment just what are you feeling? What are you thinking? What do you need? I need my mama. <laughs> I need my mama. I need my mama. That's all I need. I can't get no answers without her. <laughs> Only she knows who she slept with. Only she knows who she was with. I appreciate him for raising me and being my daddy. <laughs> but I'm still hurt. Somebody should have told me the truth. Mr. Jones, you and your mother are co-plaintiffs who have brought the defendant, Ms. Milan, to court to prove her three-month-old son, Quinnell Jr., is not your biological child. Yes, Your Honor. You claim you took Ms. Milan and her other six kids into your home, and now she's trying to take you for a ride by claiming... This baby is yours. Yes, Your Honor. Additionally, you say when today's DNA results prove you are not the father, you are seeking $1,500 for housing and child care expenses. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Milan, though you do admit to cheating on Mr. Jones with another man, you say you're unsure if you were already pregnant when you cheated. Yes, Your Honor. You say you're here today to prove to Mr. Jones and his meddling mother once and for all that Mr. Jones is without a doubt the biological father of baby Quinnell Jr. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Jones, why do you feel Quinnell Jr. is not your son's child? 
Well, Your Honor, I contacted the court three days after the baby was born because I watched my son break down at the hospital. You know, he was going to be devastated if this child wasn't his. It doesn't make sense to not know. And so how did you two meet? Her mother and my mother was neighbors. When she moved back home with her mom, uh, her mom used to talk to her about me or whatever like that. And then how'd this relationship begin? When I first, you know, moved home with my mom, I noticed him. She was like, you know, this Mr. Jones, he lived next door. We started, you know, just on a friendly note, you know, hey, how you doing? We'll sit down, we'll talk, laugh, joke. I'll go back in, tend to my kids. Um, eventually, he started, like, I could tell it was a little more flirting going on. Like, he'd be like, um, why don't you come watch a movie sometime? Or, you know, I wasn't taking him very seriously because it, it is an age difference in between me and Mr. Jones. So, Mr. Jones, you thought this was just a... Uh... What? I feel like once I pr approached her, you know what I'm saying, I tried to make her my lady, she chose her ex over me. You felt like you were, um, runner-up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Cause I came to her and I came to her like a man. I was like, I like you and I'm feeling you or whatever like this, so we can make something happen. Once I started sleeping with Mr. Jones, I was no longer sleeping with my ex. You knew that a likely consequence of having unprotected sex would be that you would become pregnant. Yes, Your Honor. Did you discuss that with Mr. Jones? He always said he couldn't have children. Said the doctor told Why, him. But... Why'd you say you couldn't have children, Mr. Jones? <clears throat> because I used to play sports in school or whatever, so I had to, you know, have a full body physical. And they told me that I wasn't able to have kids. So, so... during a physical, they told you you would be unable to have children? Yes, ma'am. Judge, it was at a point where uh, they had got to the point where they were serious to the point enough for her and her kids didn't have anywhere to go. So I offered for her and her kids to come to my house. That's how I thought that they were in a relationship with So you me. thought they were in a relationship? Yes, yeah, because it, it, when it, her, it time a relationship. she and her children didn't have anywhere to go, uh -huh. you said they could come and stay with you? Yes, ma'am. Yep. And they did? Yes. Yeah. When they, came, when they came and stayed with me and my mom, me and my mom, we was then in a, in a, a relationship, relationship. Yeah. When they came and stayed. How did you find out she was pregnant? She called, she called and told me. I was with my ex. She called and Is told me. Is it still me. your ex when you back, back up, with her? I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> She's still Young. my ex. We wasn't together. When, when, I, when I was with my ex, she, we wasn't together. It just, we had, we, we had a, a well, long we separated. I lived. relationship. I didn't All run right. back. So get to the pregnancy part. <laughs> okay. okay. She was, she called, she said she was three and a half weeks pregnant. I was like, by who? You know what I'm saying? She, she said, it's a possibility, it's your, I know that, you know what I'm saying? Then she was like, I had sex with my ex or whatever like that, so she was like, it's a possibility that it could have been him too. So she tells you. She tells you, right being the honest, right off it the bat. It could be she yours, straightforward. it could be his. Mm -hmm. When I found out she stopped taking the birth control, the first thing I done was I gave my son some condoms because she has six kids already and I know she's fertile. Use them. Did you use them, Mr. Jones? No. No. When you found out she was pregnant, even though she said it could be yours or it could be my ex's, did you step up? Yes, yes ma'am. You did? Yes, ma'am. I, I wanted to make sure. I wanted yes. to make sure. If, if it's a possibility of being my child, I want to be there. I don't want to miss nothing. I want to be able to go back That's and right. tell, tell these stories and say, I was there doing this, doing that. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. right. when he was When he was being born, I'm right there holding her hand, watching everything. Yeah. That's right. And That's... you were there as well, Ms. Jones? I was at the hospital, you know, like I told my son, I, just be there until we find out otherwise because he, I raised him without a father. And every child needs their parents. And I don't want him to be the, like the man that, his father. I want him to be a better man. So, <laughs> I understand. And she was pregnant, yeah, she and didn't have true. to lift a finger. Your Honor, she didn't have to lift a finger for nothing. You know what I'm saying? I did everything. You no, know, to take care of the boys, make sure they going to school. I you was, you no know, feeding her, doing the cleaning. Yeah. So did you ever tell the ex that he potentially could be the father too? I told him first. You know, he was, I was around him at the time. I was feeling sick and I was like, you know, I knew I hadn't been out there that long also. But I did go to the store and get a pregnancy test and it came out positive. I ended up telling Mr. Jones also. And you know, he did his talking or whatever, but he ended up texting and was like, okay, regardless of what, you know, if this is my child, I do want to be around. Let me know when you go to the doctor. So because... you were there participating like the father. Did you sign the birth certificate? No, I no, told you no, not to. No, I, I didn't he sign wasn't... anything because I wanted the DNA test yeah. first. Well, that was smart. In the case of Jones versus Mylan, when it comes to three-month-old, 
Quinnell Milan. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Jones, you are not the father. <coughs> I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Yeah, I'm like... You okay, Mr. Jones? I'm ready to go. I'm sorry. I hope you will find comfort in knowing that you did the right thing. No matter what you may have gotten wrong or right in the relationship with Miss Milan, you did right by this beautiful baby. As for your suit, Miss Jones, for $1,500 for the room and board and for all of the expenses related to the child... You know something, Judge? I don't need any money. She's gonna need everything that she has to take care of her <laughs> This is why it's an honor for me to sit here because I get to witness the power of forgiveness, humanity, compassion on a daily basis.